Hello and welcome to the Majors Mess Up podcast. This is episode 203. I'm your host, Gavin, and it is just me at the moment. Um, everyone else is busy. Kelly's laptop doesn't work properly, so she's got to get that fixed. Um, Sammy is still traveling around. She's moving from um, California to um, Hawaii, so she's like doing that whole thing. Um, Scott, as you know, has got his own podcast he's been hosting. Mikey is in New York at the moment on a vacation. Um, Stephanie's got so much going on in her life. It's just crazy how busy everybody is. And um, it's already been a while since we put an episode out and I didn't want to delay it anymore. And we do have a guest on this episode. And for the longest time, I've been putting off doing interviews on my own because I get nervous for some reason. I always want to have somebody there with me. And a lot of the time, the guest that's on is somebody that I really admire and whose work I've followed. Not so much the case for Kelly and, and you know, and Stephanie, for instance, um, and even Sammy. Um, so they're kind of, they have to do the research and, you know, get up to date with who it is we're talking to and whatnot. And uh, I just thought, you know what? I can do this on my own. I know I can. Um, I just need to bite the bullet and, and, and do it. It's just a nerves thing. The thing is, as soon as the guest comes on, the nerves go away anyway. I'm completely fine. So anyway, our guest for this episode is somebody that I've wanted to talk to for a while who, I mean, he's living the dream. The, the, the things that he's working on is just stuff that I would adore to be involved with. Um, his name's Matt Danner, and he is a producer, director, screenwriter, storyboard artist, animator, and voice actor. He's done so much. He even told me in the interview he's done stand-up comedy as well before which i didn't even know um he won an emmy in 2020 for outstanding performer in a preschool animated program for muppet babies because he voices baby kermit um as i'm sure a lot of you guys know they they sort of did a reboot in 2018 of um muppet babies you know it's obviously a, a lot of the people that listen to our podcast will remember it from um like the early 80s around that time they did a cartoon which was i mean i loved it I was obsessed. And then when they brought it back in 2018, my kids fell in love with it, and and, you know, and so did I. I mean, it is it is a fantastic... It's on Disney+, Plus. you've never seen it. It's a fantastic show for kids. Um, and, uh, yeah, I urge anyone with kids, even if you don't have kids, to be honest, just give it a watch. It's fantastic. And, yeah, he won an Emmy for voicing Baby Kermit and that, so we got to talk to him about that. Incredible. And just a, a bit of a backstory as well, just so you can you kind of know how um, I came to talk to Matt. He actually follows me, and I follow him on Twitter. And um, it was right before he uh, he commented on one of my um, viral tweets. I've been getting a lot of viral tweets lately, where I, I basically I post an image. I've talked about it before on the podcast. I post an image of something that's almost disguised, but it's quite obvious what it's supposed to look like. And I will make two bogus suggestions of what that thing is. So it could be like, oh, is it a whale or is it a dog? And I'll say, if you think it's a whale, you're left-brained. If you think it's a dog, you're right-brained. Which do you think it is? And it's neither a dog or a whale. It's neither one of those things. It's it's something completely different. So it kind of makes people want to comment. I mean, people people are calling me a, an engagement farmer um, and I'm baiting people into, you know, commenting and leaving comments and then I'm 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 really I mean I, I guess I am but I mean I don't really see what the harm is I mean it's just a bit of fun and a lot of the time people will see things that I didn't even see in there like sometimes they see celebrities in these images and like it's it's quite kind of cool to see you know different people's perspectives and um, but it does ache a lot of people um but yeah anyway Matt was Matt seen one of my viral tweets and commented on it I think it was it was supposed to look like a hippo. It was a potato or something. And I, I couldn't believe that Matt Dana, because I knew who he was. I was like, oh my God, Matt Dana from Muppet Baby just commented on a tweet. And so, of course, I, I let him know that I knew who he was and he gave me a follow. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to ask him if he'll come on. And he said yes. And yeah, we had a fantastic chat. It was literally like two kids talking about shows that they enjoy. Like it was, it was so laid back. And I mean, I just loved it so much. So yeah, so we're going to go through now to our interview with uh, Matt Dana. Hey, hey, buddy, man, I am so sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about it, honestly. Let's just say I had a uh, 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 an evening, and uh, <laughs> I'm glad it's over. Uh, so I do apologize, but I'm here. I'm 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 with you. <laughs> How are you? Very nice Gonzo, by the way, in the back yeah, there. That's, uh, yeah, that's one of the photo replicas that they came out with a few years back. It's pretty cool. 
I'm actually the guy that the guy that helped design those. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Is what's his name? Terry Angus. Have you ever heard? Yeah, of Terry him? Angus. Yeah, no, I I know him, I know him quite well. He was a puppeteer on uh, Fraggle yes, Rock. And, that's right. Yeah. So yeah he, he's, he's he had made something some to do with too. these things. So yeah, yeah. And um, he actually, I, so as you can tell, I'm from the UK. I'm from Liverpool. Um, but I'm actually in Nova Scotia, Canada, which is where Terry is from. So I've met Terry before as well. Nice. Well, if you see him again, please say hi. I know he was having, last time I talked to him, he was having some health problems. Yes. Yeah. He, he suffers with his legs and his back and yeah, yeah, he's had a tough go of it. Yeah. But he's a, he's a great guy. Like he's, uh, he yeah. He was super nice. I, I met him at a, I, I went to a, like a back to the, back to the future convention in 2015. And, um, he was there with like, he had, he had his, uh, Fozzie puppet and a couple of the other puppets that he had as well. And I'd never heard of the guy before. And of course, I see I'm a huge Muppet fan. So I've seen this this Fozzie. So whenever I got a selfie with Fozzie, I got to talk to him and he was telling me that he worked on Fraggle Rock. And yep. thought, wow, this guy's amazing. And then a couple of years later, he came on the podcast. So yeah, it was great. Did you see the footage with, with of him performing with Jim Henson at that award show? I haven't seen the footage. No, I've seen photographs of him with Jim and I'm just like in awe of it. It's just it's amazing. really cool. Yeah. Jim Jim had very nice things to say about him, and it's 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 wild when you meet someone who actually knew Jim because it's tough now. Like yes, yeah, you know that's right, yeah, yeah. And been working with that. the Muppets, like very few people you talk to actually know him, knew him. You it's, know, it's it's really sad, but it's it's true. I mean, I, I actually seen a clip of Jim talking about Terry, and um, yeah. very briefly he he'd mentioned like, oh, we just got this this new young puppeteer that's coming in to work with us, and he's from Canada, and uh, yeah, it's really cool. That's great. Yeah, it's, I've actually got a. It's hanging up somewhere. There it is. There, it's a signed photo of Jim. I obviously never met Jim. I'm, I'm a couple of years younger than you are. Um, a friend of mine who's not really a Muppets fan got to meet him one time and got his autograph. And then when we became friends, he was like, "I've got something you might want." And I'm like, "What is it?" And he gives me this signed photo. I'm like, "Are you serious? I can keep this?" Yeah. He's like, "Yeah." So I threw it in a frame and it's on the wall. Wow, that's that's a good friend, man. That's yeah, a... I know, yeah. I thought so. I don't <laughs> know if you regretted it afterwards, but I'm like, man, thank you very much. Yeah. That's cool. That's so funny. Yeah, so I you heard. and I obviously we you know we're Twitter friends or ex friends. Yeah. Which is weird to say, but um I yeah, know, so you, but you know it's a future, right? Yeah, I know. It's weird. Um but yeah so you you obviously seen one of my ridiculous viral tweets. Like they're so silly. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what's going on. It was a social experiment at first for me to just kind of come up with this, like it's an obvious image of something. Yeah. And I found lots of different ones, but then rather than just post it and say, what do you guys see? I, I found that if you make two bogus suggestions of things that aren't even in the image, yep. people are so quick to point out what is obvious because they don't think it's obvious to you because you've made two alternative suggestions and they just keep going. And it's, it's I'm just having fun with it. I told you, you're the left brain, right brain guy now. Like, <laughs> I put it in my bio. I put that. <laughs> you did? That's great. Yeah, I'll put it in no, there. I, cause that's why I interacted with you because I totally saw the joke right away and I was just like, oh, it's just a piece of wood. You know, yes, like you, I gave you, you another option that wasn't even part of the thing. And then, and then, yeah, no, but I did, I really do appreciate what you're doing. And I know you're probably getting a lot of hate from it too. Oh, it's, it, honestly, but I have you know. it. And people keep saying, you should just block them. And I'm like, no, because they need to be held accountable for opening this yeah. silly mouth. <laughs> and this is how I do it because I call them out in a, in a, in a quote tweet and then my yeah. followers jump on them then. And then I just sit back like this and watch. It, it's, it's interesting funny. too, because. You know, it's funny because I, you know, I have friends who get really, you know, I don't, I don't get, I know, I, you know, you, you follow me for a little while now, but like, you know, like I don't get too overtly political or anything on, on Twitter because it's Twitter and it's just basically, you're just screaming into the, well, like I, I take care of my beliefs and the things that I want to pursue and the things that are important to me and my family and all that kind of stuff off of Twitter. Twitter yeah. for me is a place to go read some dumb shit and interact with some nice people that I like or people that I know make some jokes. Like I like the, the fun of it. And I've so far had a very positive experience. Like every now and again, you get someone who just says, Hey, I just saw this thing you made and you should just die. Yeah. Well, I'm I, like, so I seen that I, okay. in, in, my, in my research. I, I was going over your old tweets to see things yeah. that you talked about. And uh, you would, it was somebody you'd posted something about the three, uh, I can never pronounce caballeros. it. Caballeros. Three caballeros. Cab 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 caballeros. Here's how we put it in the show, too. We, we Right at the first episode, we go, caballeros. <laughs> so I can't get it. it. My wife was down here before, and I said, how do you say this? And she said, I'm not sure. Hold on. So she she Googles it. She's like, you can Google everything. And she's playing this like all automated voice saying the word. Yeah. And I got it's it right. Like, caballeros. Said caballeros. It a million times, yeah. and it's gone again. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, seen, I seen somebody at like, you were just like, you were just telling this people about it. And he just got really mad. 
but yeah, you never but, rose to it. You like had fun with it. And I, I thought, that well, was that was the first time I've ever interacted. Usually I just ignore it. Yeah. You know, and it happens very rarely, like, you know, cause I'm part of the Muppet community and the duck community. And like, they're all so friendly and they like, you know, they like interaction and they like seeing stuff and it's yeah. fun, you know, and it's always been very positive. And I don't usually, I don't start fights, you know? And that was the only time I really engaged where I'm like, what did I do? You know? Yeah. And, and and you could see the conversation spiral out like right away with like, well, it's not like the old good old days. I'm like, you mean when like cartoons were racist? Like <laughs> what good old days are you talking about? Like, yeah. so, so there's that. But, but what I find interesting about what you're doing is like, and I love that you call it a social experiment. Cause like, I see you uh, just say the most, you're not starting any fights. You're not saying anything horrible. You're just being very friendly saying like innocuous things and people really get mad at you. And I'm like, God, it's wild. Yeah. It's yeah. it's weird. I, it's like you're shattering the reality in a small way or something. You know? Yeah. And then I'll, I'll quote t- tweet them and say something like, imagine being triggered by a potato because that's what it is. <laughs> it's a potato that looks like a hippo and you're angry at me. Yeah. For some unknown reason. I, I just, just don't get it. Yeah. Well, yeah. God bless you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, so ob- ob- obviously you're most well known for working on the Muppet Babies, at least to me, anyway. Um, and I, yeah, I, I there's want- it's weird. It's it, once your once your history gets long enough, it's like it it changes over time, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. So I mean, because I mean, I seen that you you you'd obviously commented on a tweet, and I seen your name, and I'm like Matt Anna, that can't be the Matt Anna. And I looked, and I was like, it is, it's him. And that's oh, of course, that's when I tweeted. Yeah, I was like. Wow, this is awesome! Because you'd your name had come up in the past when we interviewed Carlos Alasraki. He'd mentioned, oh yeah, yeah. He'd mentioned I can't remember what it was in reference to, but he mentioned that he'd worked with you, were a friend of his, or you'd worked with him, or something. He's and, how I met my wife. Oh really? Yeah. So they worked together on Reno Nine One One. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I worked with Carlos on a bunch of animated stuff, like Mucha Lucha and yes. um, other things. You know, all I worked with him. You know, he's one of those guys who's like he's. He's a, he's a multi-talent. He can do a, a yes. million voices, such a nice guy. And we, you know, we became friends and, you know, I started talking to him about how I was, um, you know, in pitch meetings a lot and how a lot of my job had become being much more presentational in a room. And like Disney would start asking me to do these like town halls where they'd give me a mic and I would pitch a cartoon. And, you know, we were talking about it. He's like, you should do stand up. I think you'd be good at it. Cause I do voices too. But I, and I was like, Oh, and he's like, you know, maybe it'd be fun. And so, he actually like, you know, got, he became sort of my mentor in that. And like, I did open mics and like, you know, he gave me little exercises to do. Um, and then once I was ready and I had a set, he booked me on one of his shows as like an opener. Oh, and, nice. and he also booked Annie, my wife, okay, uh, who then we met and then, um, and it was a very friendly meet. Like I did, I did, you know, I, 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 I was, I was single at the time and she was not, uh, but I did, you know, I found that out very quickly. Um, you know, in the most friendly, beautiful way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then somebody had seen that show and then booked me and Annie and Carlos once in a while um on a monthly comedy show in Burbank um that was right. animation focused. And so we did a monthly show and so we started working together and became friends over the course of a year. And then once that we did sort of our last show where we we're like everyone was kind of getting tired and we're like, all right, we did a whole year. Eric Bowser was in it. Yeah, uh, he was a regular. He had an act every every uh, month. Um, and these uh, are like stand up sets. You would like. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, eventually yeah. it kind of transformed because a lot of the same audience kept coming back. So we kept trying to mix up the show. So eventually it, it turned into sort of a Sunny and Cher variety show where uh, one of my friends who's another stand up and, and writer and Annie started a band um, that was like, but basically Sunny and Cher, if they were divorced and hated each okay. other's guts, but they kept the band together. <laughs> And they were the hosts of the show. And we started we started doing a variety show. So I just started doing different things. I did a shadow puppet experience. I did like weird, like I started like just for fun. I decided to do prop comedy because I know that that's like cringe, you know? And I was yeah, like, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know? Um, eventually, once the show kind of took shape though, I when everyone started finding what, what, what they wanted to do, I eventually became the animal wrangler where I basically had a bunch of puppets and that would all like, you know, try to hurt me and kill me and stuff. And then, <laughs> and then, and then right at the end though, that was a little too much work too. So then eventually toward the end, I started doing a, a drawing uh, show called um, I called it stump Matt Danner, where basically I had a projector and I drew and I had a, I had like a microphone, you know, attached and, and I would just talk to the audience and I would draw their favorite cartoon characters. And then it became a contest of like, if I can't draw it from memory, you get a prize. 
Oh, and nice. Stuff. Drive from memory, you get the drawing. And I'm pretty good at this game. This is like a this is like a party trick of mine. Okay. Um, but I also use a little bit of mentalism with it where I'm allowed to ask questions. So if I don't quite remember what it looks like, I'm allowed to ask questions and and I start, but I usually like I've all I like that. That's a good game. Times. Yeah. So that's sort of how it evolved. So it was really an interesting experience, but it really did get me super confident. And like, you know, I have social anxiety as much as the next person. In terms of doing rooms now, like no problem. I'm like, thank you, Carlos. <laughs> you know, I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the yeah, that's that's how it all happened. That's great. Yeah, I know he's he's a really nice guy. When he came on our podcast, he was just like he, he, you could just see he's just full of enthusiasm. And and that of course, you know, when you're talking to someone, that's what you want. You want the enthusiasm, just like what you're giving me now. You're really enthusiastic. And I find that with I, I don't know if it's a voiceover thing, like if it's a voice actor thing, but like even when we were talking to Jeff Bergman, he's another one. He came on and he was just like full of life. Shot out of a cannon. Yeah. 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 It was great, great. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, I love like, that. So you're into like, I mean, I didn't even know you did stand up, but you're, you've done so much stuff like you know, screenwriting, storyboard artist, producer, animator, voice actor, director. Like, how, how have you managed to do so many of these things instead of just focusing on just the one thing? Well, it's just your personality that you just like to do different things. I mean, I think it is. That's so, so that's a really good question. And I actually have an answer for that, which is, okay. which is I, even growing up, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I could draw, I could act, I could be funny. I could, you know, and, and being funny was more of a survival tool for me back in the day. Like I definitely like, you know, learned how to be funny really quick, especially when, you know, cause I was, I was really little and I got bullied a lot in school. And like, so I, being funny was a great get out of jail free card. Yeah, same, same with me. Same with me. I, you know I, I mean? Honestly, like the bullies liked me because they'd pick on everyone else, but then they look at me and they go, do your Donald look impression? And I do it. And then he thought it was yeah. cool then. So it do worked. voices, sing me a song, make something up, you know, yeah. and I was quick, you know, and I would just like, you know, gag around and I could draw too. So I could draw funny drawings of them, you know, like, I mean, I had, I had guys who, you know, could, could kick my ass three ways to Sunday that I would draw a caricature of a mean one. And they would laugh and like, they would like, you know, you know, yeah, you, you've been exactly. punched in the arm, yeah. and I was their buddy ever since. You know, like that kind of stuff. Um, but so, so to answer your question, though, so I I like doing all this stuff, and once I realized that animation did all of those things and put it into one form, that's why I chose to be a cartoonist. Okay, and that's when I said I want to be an animator. I want to do cartoons, and then from then on, and I was probably like twelve at the time. You know, this is during the nineties when like you know, like the, the cartoon Renaissance was happening and we had like Beavis and Butthead and Ren and Stimpy and like, you know, Rugrats and like all of these shows that were creator driven yeah. and new, different. And, um, and I said, that's what I want to do. And like, you know, Powerpuff Girls. And I've had the, the wonderful, you know, fortunate opportunity to work with Craig McCracken more than once, you know, and he's a s swell guy and like wonderful person. And I love working with him. Um, and then, you know, you start to get to work with your heroes and stuff. But um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm going off the rails. Uh, so I realized that all of these things fed into the same thing. So as I went through my career, I kept trying to just get good at that, at one thing at a time. So at first I just got in and I was, and I learned how to be in an office, you know, and I was an intern and I was doing photocopies and getting coffee. Yeah. And then eventually they put me in charge of like, of doing checking and, and, and X sheets and like, and you know, I don't want to say it's easy work, like, but it was, and it was an, an artistic work, but it was, it was like, here's the X sheet. Here's the the camera with the with the pad or with the um the pegboard. Put these draw take pictures of these drawings and put them in the X sheet to exactly that. It was like that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. we had exposure yeah. sheets at the time, which is an old okay. way of doing cartoons. Um, and eventually I got it and I got good at that. And then eventually I got I learned how to write X sheets, and then I got into inking, and then I got into in betweening, and then I got into layout. And every time I just tried to get as good as I could at something, and then naturally moved into the next thing and then it was and then it was animation now i'm an animator and then and then i got into like layout and then i got into storyboarding and then i started and then uh, and then i started dabbling in design at the same time because i realized that like a lot of times in storyboards when you don't have a design to work with you have to, you kind of have to make it up so i would so i started focusing on that you know and then that got together with 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 um then i started directing that led into directing and then that led into writing and so and even the voice acting I did all along the way. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you heard the story, but like, you know, my first voice acting, my first real voice acting gig, like Union, uh, was I used to sub for Casey Kasem for Shaggy on Scooby-Doo. Oh, okay. And he would like, you know, not be able to do it or like he would, he was too busy or whatever. 
and I would go into the booth and go, oh, like, hey, Scoob. And because I could do a shaggy because I was the noisy, weird kid, you know, in the studio that could do that stuff. And um, so anyway, so yeah, so it all sort of, but it, but it all fed into the same thing at the end of the day. Um, yeah. But where, yeah, and that's basically what I'm still doing. So it, it, so really now when I start a gig, it's always different. It's always like, what do you need me to do? Like, am I directing? Do you need me to do, do you need me to do like, like on some, like I just did a job uh, over the, over the past you know, fall where I was just doing retake direction when I was help doing animation direction, basically. Yeah. Um, Cause they needed it and I needed a gig and here, here we go. So, um, and sometimes I get hired to write and sometimes I get hired to do this. Sometimes I get a voice gig, you know, it just, yeah. it just really depends. Is there um, anything that you've done that you're just like, you know what I've done that don't really want to do that anymore. Or are you open to do everything that you've done? No, I mean, I'll say this. I will say that I've I've learned over time as well to to me to measure my my uh, energy and calories. So I will say that I prefer to do jobs with that that spend less calories that have a larger impact. Yeah. So for instance, writing. You know, for instance, in terms of time and and the amount of of uh, uh you know, I, I don't want to say effort, but I want to say the amount of um, again, I have to say calories that it takes because yeah. I can write a sentence in a certain amount of time, but then to storyboard that sentence takes twice as much to three times to four times about, about as much time. And then to animate, it takes even more time than that and more drawings. And as you, as you go, it exponentially becomes more and more work. Yeah. Um, so I do try to manage my calories if I can, but I yeah. always, I always get my hands dirty. Like I'm directing a, a thing right now and I can't tell you what it is, but it's really cool, and it should be out in the next couple of months. Um, but <laughs> Can you tell uh, us where it's going to be out, though. I have no idea. All oh, I know okay. is it's, it's, one it's of those. got some really okay. cool people involved, and it's a really cool project, and I'm really proud of it, and I'm directing on it. But I'm still the I'm still the guy that's like, you know, what? Just give me the scene. I'll crack it open and do the. Yeah. I'll do the. Reaction, or let so me what's just, the let me What's the most rewarding thing? What would you say? Like, is it producing? Is it you know voiceover? What would you say? Um. It was a hard uh, to say. I, well, here's the thing. I mean, my, the most rewarding thing is when you, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, you, whatever it and, is. Well, and you can, watch, and you can watch people watch it. Like, I love screening things with groups. Whether or not they worked on it, that's why I like doing stand-up, because there was an instant reaction yes. from an audience. Yeah. So so, so I, I will say voice acting has a lot of that same quality. Um, it's just a little more isolated because especially now, like, you know, most of the time I just record here in my office. This is my booth right here. Okay. And you know, it's over, it's over a, a line, but you know, there was a time when we would get in with all the, like I'm up at babies. We did an ensemble until COVID hit. Um, and it's great, like making people laugh and there is a high that you get from it. So when you come out of a session, you're like, Ooh, so that feels really good. But I'd say it's comparable to when you finish a, uh, a, a project or actually I got one more when you're doing a project and you have milestones of success, whatever they are, like when, like when you cracked a project, when you like, you finally get some footage back and it's like, we did it everybody. And you have a whole room of people high fiving and going like, all right. I mean, we still got to finish, but like, you know, the, it gives you that motivation to keep going. You Definitely, know, yeah. it's that feeling that I really feed off of, I think. Yeah. You so, know? so it, with, with the team with sport of it, the people I love, I love being around people and I like the energy that they bring. So that must have been tough then when COVID hit then, because obviously you, like you say, you did you record like Muppet Babies in that booth behind yep. you? That, I recorded yeah. a whole half a season in there. So that must yeah. have been tough because you'd, you'd done seasons together. So that must have been tough for you all. It was very strange. And we were all in charge of our own records and stuff. And like, you know, like if somebody's file went corrupt, like they'd have to go back and pick up their lines. And sometimes like you'd get a call saying like, hey, uh, all your stuff is really crunchy. Like you peaked or something. So we, get, we need to redo it. And. Uh, it added a lot more stress to it. I mean, eventually, uh, my wife, Annie, who is also, an, she's a writer and an artist um, and an actress, um, she actually started, um, uh, like, engineering for me because it was the only way that I could, like, stay focused on being fun and funny without having to worry about that, too, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because uh, you, you don't have the, the other actors to bounce off in the same way. Yeah, and we did, sort of, like, when we did when we did Zooms, like, we all did it together. Still, yeah. yeah, of course. I mean, um, you're all professionals, but it's not obviously yeah, it's not it's not the same. Not the same, yeah, yeah. That but I'd say most of the time, though, like that was actually rare. Most of the time, when I get called in to record anything, I'm always by myself. Yeah, or they'll book you for a couple hours and they'll say come in, and then they'll you know sometimes you'll read against the director or sometimes you just do the lines. 
it depends on the process you know yeah yeah so with 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 muppet babies what like where did that who <laughs> brought that idea up where did that come from like for it to you know revive it or you know reboot it if you like um yeah so i'd like to take uh, uh some credit but it was a team so we so i was part of a team at disney called advanced media yeah and we were housed in a department of disney called disney labs which was part of disney interactive and this is before disney plus this is before disney plus and uh, uh, uh my boss at the time was a guy named joe sicta who i still work with um he he was actually a, a executive producer of uh what's new scooby-doo uh, for many, many years and did a lot. That's how I got, that's how I, I met him when I started doing Shaggy. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, we, we always got along and like he, you know, I'd seen some of my work and I had a, I had a, I had a, a history of at Disney doing development. Um, and he'd seen some of my stuff and, um, he needed to, he started starting this new secret department and it was called advanced media, which basically meant anything that isn't television or movies. So okay. it was like we did so so streaming fit into that because that was something that was brand new that Disney hadn't done yet. Yeah. Um it was uh, uh apps and games because we were part of interactive. Um and it was uh VR, AR, all sorts of different things and internet, like yeah. YouTube stuff, like short stuff. So um and we worked with publishing, which is why we did three caballeros. And we worked with like interactive, uh, uh, you know, games, which was why we did things like Club Penguin. We did a bunch of specials for Club Penguin. Um, and these were all meant to go to Netflix or Amazon or one of the streamers, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, but then there was another department within our department, within our department, that was secretly <laughs> working on something else. And so when we started like basically pitching the streamers, Bob Iger, who we actually were quite not too far away from in terms of person people you know we were yeah. only kind of like like my boss was one guy away from bob you know oh, okay wow um so he <laughs> said hey we're not selling this we got something and then he introduced us to the disney life team which would eventually become the disney plus team okay and then we started developing for that so while all that was going on muppets came into our department they, the whole muppet studio came in and they were trying to figure out what to do next. And that's why they started doing internet stuff. That's why they did that ABC show, which yeah. wasn't part of our department, but it was within the, it, we're trying to figure out how to take these characters somewhere else. And my theory was just, hey, like, what about preschool? And I don't do preschool really. Like I do, you know, like I'll, I'll do anything, but, um, but my whole pitch was, hey, it's like, you know, we're trying to figure out like, you know, how do we get people to know who the Muppets are and stuff? Because really the, the kind of the issue was is that people weren't really aware of them anymore. Like they'd come out with a movie every few years and stuff like that, but like they just didn't have the presence that they used to. Yes. And what That's we true. figured out was because we grew up on Sesame street and Kermit was on Sesame street every day. And then once that was over and you grew up out of it, then there was Muppet show, which you got to watch every week. Yeah. And then there were movies and like there was, there was an and specials and there was always something, you know? Um, but then that stopped. And then when, when, you know, when Jim unfortunately left us, you know, Elmo kind of took over Sesame street in the nineties and Kermit kind of disappeared, you know, yeah. from that show. And he, you know, I know he popped in every now and again, but like not, not in the same way. No, not the so, same. No. <clears throat> so, so I posed the, and I, and I, and I, and I, I will take credit for this. I said, what if we bring Kermit back to preschool? Okay, and so it was you yeah. then. Yeah, you can you can take credit for that. It was you. Well, no, <laughs> but I mean, it was part of that was the question I asked the team, and then and then yeah. we all kind of we thought, talked about it, and then we went back to Muppet Studio and we said, "What about Muppet Babies? Like, what's yeah. going on with Muppet Babies?" And they're like, "We have that, and we probably can never air the original show because of all of the copyrights, copyrights and things yeah. involved with that." So, do what do you think? What do you got? And we said, "We'll figure it out." And then you know, then Joe and Chris Moreno and 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 Chris Painter and Mark Baldo. And Sarah Finn, we had a whole, t our whole team, uh, you know, Sam Duppelar, Nikki Litton. Um, we all got together and we just, you know, brainstormed and did this. Kirk Thatcher came in to uh, consult with us, um, you know, and, uh, uh, and eventually we uh, did a test with a company called Liquid Animation, just a little one minute test. And we just did it on our own. We basically like Joe just said, just went and got the funds for it and we just made it. Yeah. Uh, and no one knew we were doing it. And then at one all hands meeting, when Joe was showing, he, it was time for us to show what we were working on. We we're working on tons of cool stuff. 
but he literally just said, "Hey, who uh, who here likes Muppet Babies? Who remembers Muppet Babies?" Woo! And he goes, "All right, well, check this out." And he hit the play button, and the video. And I don't know if it's out there anywhere, but it's like we basically opened on the window, and it was a real window, though it looked like it looked real. Yeah. And then we had Baby Kermit come in like a Muppet and go, you know, hi. And it was him in the old sailor suit too. We actually did oh, the nice. <laughs> thing, and you know, and he said, "Hi, oh there," and it was me. I did all the scratch for it because you know we just did it secretly, right? And I said, you know, hi, Kermit the Frog here and uh, welcome to Muppet Nursery. And then he jumps on a rocking horse. And then we still did it like the like the original Muppets in Manhattan video. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where you couldn't see that it wasn't a puppet. And then he starts singing the Muppet Babies theme. And then we pull out and he's got feet. And then Fozzie and Piggy are there and they're playing too. <laughs> and it's like, what? And then he falls off the horse and then goes, hey, let's play X-Wing Fighter. And they all run around in circles and then blast off. And then we literally just composited them into Star Wars footage. <laughs> and we had them flying around and we just pulled the foot. Like, we, like I remember we asked, like, hey, do you think the, you think the Star Wars team will let us use some footage? And like someone was like, just just go to the Disney store downstairs and rip a Blu-ray. Yeah, just do it. It'll yeah. be faster. <laughs> you know, you'll never be able to do it for the show, but you can do it for this thing that no one's going to see. Yeah. And um, and then we did it. And we did the Death Star run and we just took we edited all the shots that didn't have any ships in them. And we we put the the characters flying around and we com we comp them into it like they look like they belonged in it and we blew up the Death Star <laughs> and Kevin went easy blasts off dude we got a standing ovation <laughs> and, and then like at that meeting Consumer Products was there and we're like we're in and then we get a phone call from Disney Junior and they're like we want it and then that's it you know that's incredible what see what I love about that is that like that that show literally exists like that that reboot exists because of and and you can be as humble as you want but it exists because a fan came up with the idea because you're you're you've always been a fan of the muppets and that's yeah. what i love about it it wasn't just some like big executive who was like yeah you know what that that show that was on in the 80s people would like to watch that we could do something that, it, it was literally it came from a fan of the muppets and i love that yeah and it was i mean all of us were like we were all yeah. we all wanted to help like so yeah. bad and like so we, I mean, you know, again, like we had support, like, don't get me wrong. Like we didn't do this like totally in secret. No, of course. Yeah, but, like yeah, yeah. the rest of the company had no clue what we were doing. Um, but we had, we had support from, uh, um, uh, 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 Kyle Laughlin, who was our boss at the time. And, uh, um, and, uh, uh, Debbie McKellen, who was, um, the, um, uh, 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 head of the, head of the Muppet studio at the time. And basically we're like, we said, can we do this? And they went, yeah, sure. Go for it. You know? And, but then since then they 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 did nothing but support us until we got the the green light and then yeah and then 80 episodes later and a bunch of shorts and a bunch of emmys and stuff like yeah we you know we did all right yeah and uh, to, to mention the emmy i mean congratulations on that that i mean what a Thank win <laughs> that was amazing that is I love literally the, fact that the last pinned. thing i ever thought i would get yeah, well, yeah you could see because like i mean you put the video up because because it was during lockdown obviously and um and yeah. i assume it was your wife that was filming the, yeah. the the tv and you were you were obviously on the on the call and then I think there was a delay because when you came out, oh, it, yeah. was, it was still on and you were like, like uh, I was in a stupor. Well, I was ready to lose. So like, cause they said like, Hey, when you lose, like applaud, cause you're going to still be on camera. So I got the Kermit doll yeah, and I was just going to do the Kermit <laughs> doll for the video. And, uh, and so, um, and then like, and it was really a, a weird delay and they were like, and I was, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm up against Eric Bowser, yeah. um, Maurice LaMarche, Kevin Michael Richardson, like people that I have worked with, but I love and respect and who like shape what I feel like a voice actor is. And then I'm there going like, Hey everybody. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, what but, I also uh, liked about that video as well was um, when your name is announced, <clears throat> Eric, you can see on Eric's face, he is just pure delighted for you. You could just see it on his face. I mean, I, I could do, you do, your wife moves away from the screen, but you can see really quickly. That he's like, whoa, like he's like so happy because you guys. He friends. came by immediately after with a bottle of champagne. Oh, and like, man, that's kept his so because we were still heavy in COVID, right? So he like yeah. left it on the doorstep and then took a couple steps back and kept the mask on. And he was like, buddy, I want to hug you so bad. And oh, man. he was so nice. And like, yeah, he actually came up. We're neighbors still. Like, he, you know, okay, we used to be yeah, yeah. believe it or not. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, but then he, but they, yeah, it, we're, we're neighbors still. But yeah, he, uh, uh, he, what a sweetie. Like, I, I, I don't know what I'd do without him. Yeah, he's, I mean, I've never met him, never spoke to him before, but I just, I just love him. I think he's fantastic. Like, everything that he posts, everything that he says, it's like he's living my dream. Like, 
what he gets to do and is it, i mean he is so talented as well oh yeah yeah no he's he always incredible. was and i and i'll tell you he deserves every bit of it and i'm telling you he's he's just as nice as he comes off uh yeah. on everything like he's he's the true he's the real deal for sure yeah. yeah yeah he's fantastic i mean i remember when i seen the the first um i think the very first thing that the public were given from up with babies was uh it was just an image of what they were going to look like and yeah. I remember seeing it, and that was the first thing I'd seen that they were redoing the Muppet Babies because I obviously I grew up with it and I loved it as a kid. And then my daughter was born in 2014. When did this? When was the show come out? 2018 was it? 2018, I think, is when. 2018, it came yeah. Out. So my son was born in 2017. So I had really young kids who I've literally just forced the Muppets on since they were born, <laughs> and they both they both love the Muppets now. Um, and then when I seen they were redoing that, I was like, oh man, like, my kids are going to get to actually like grow up with something new of the Muppets. Yeah. And just that was, seeing and that the was, image that of was it. the idea. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it was fantastic. I mean, I don't think it's given enough credit. I mean, people will credit shows like Bluey, which is a, a great, you know, yeah. cartoon for kids, uh, you know, because it, it takes on serious issues. Mm -hmm. But so did Muppet Babies, though. That's the thing. Like, it wasn't just a, like the original Muppet Babies was just a goof. Like, it was just. It was so. It was fun. It was great. I yeah, yeah. It. it was a weird but, show. It's like a like a fever dream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. But this this one, it's not educational in the sense that it's like you know one two three ABC. Yeah. It's like social sort of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's teaching kids like how how you know the mistakes that you might make, and mm -hmm. it's it's okay to make mistakes. We all make mistakes, and it was stuff like that. And my wife said it to me a few times. She said, "You know what? This this show is really good. Like it's not just a cartoon. It's really good for kids." Yeah. And parents too. Like we like that's yes. one thing that I, I I mean again, like Bluey's a phenomenon. I mean it's the number one show on the planet. But like uh but that's we did keep parents in mind here. We wanted it to be funny. We wanted fans of the Muppets to enjoy it and we put tons of fun little Easter eggs and hidden stuff. And yeah. every season we tried to pull more Muppets out of the hat, you know, and go like, look, and here's Sweetums and here's yeah. uh, you know, here's Jill the Frog. You want a deep cut? You yeah, got it. That was, that was great. I love that one. My, my favorite, yeah. my favorite Muppet that wasn't part of the main cast that came in. It's got to be Robin with that little tail because he was a what yeah. he called Poly, Pollywog, is it? Pollywog, yeah. I love that because I was thinking, how could you do? He wouldn't even be born. How could they do? It? And yeah, there he is well, with his little it, tail, and Kermit's got hold of him. And it, oh man! In the in the original Muppet Babies, he was a tadpole in a bowl. Was he? I don't remember. Yeah, see, I don't uh, remember that. And so our first <laughs> joke was though. Cause it's so funny. Cause like when, I, while this was happening, my daughter uh, and I were, 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 do, were doing frogs. Like we got, we got little tadpoles and we got to turn them into frogs and let them go. And, um, and uh, you know, the first thing that happens is, is that they get their hind legs and not their front legs. Yeah. So I had this whole yeah. pitch and I, and it, and it failed spectacularly, but I'm like, <laughs> what if he doesn't have any arms and he's running around going, look, uncle Kermy, I have legs, I have legs. And they were like, we we did an image of it, and they were like, that is just it's it's it, for for how excited he is about that, it's a little much. And so we're like, all right, all right, well, we'll just say, hey, I got my, you know, he's just like, hey, I can run, 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 run and walk now, you know. But um, anyway, it was it was um, it, you know, he was it was we, that's the kind of stuff we wanted to add on the show is like those relationships, and and so every season we got like an allotment of Muppets, and we always tried yeah. to let. And did, so you, did you, you guys have to ask permission from, from like the Henson company? Like we want to bring this character in. Is this okay? Or like, no, the, no. Cause the Muppet studio is now all at Disney. So the Muppet characters are at Disney. We oh, did, right, okay. we did ask for the Henson's blessing on doing the show in the first place. And also, you know, just, they, they gave me their blessing to play Kermit as well. You know, like there was, they, they're, they're still, you know, they're still, uh, they're not like out of the mix. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. they're, they're still very much, uh, respected and involved. Um, what, do you, what do you think Jim would think of of the of this of this version? I have it's, no idea. It's hard to say, isn't it? It's I would just hope he likes it. I just yeah. would hope he would look at that and go, you know, that's neat. You know, because again, like he was all about doing new technologies and things like that. And one thing that I wanted to bring to the table that was again the 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 whole point of bringing Muppet Babies to a new audience was also to introduce them to the adult Muppets. Yeah. Like even the Muppet Show, our last episode of the Muppet Babies, we did an episode of the Muppet Show with the theme yeah, song. And I, lo I loved it. I just watched it again recently. Loved it. And if you notice, when you finish that, then it actually gives you all of the other Muppet stuff that you can watch. Yeah, it's like this is ne this is what's next. Yeah, yeah. So that was our sort of our goal. So, but but also one one thing that the reason why we did it in CG was because I knew we could prob we could focus on making them look as close to the puppets as possible. 
so that it was one to one. So if you saw baby Kermit and you saw adult Kermit, you could tell they were the same character and it worked, you know? Um, and I feel like that was something that we did over the Muppet Babies original, which was 2D. The, it, it was just a little too different for kids to make the connection, especially little, little kids. Yeah. So that was our goal. But so I think, I think he would dig that, especially because we did a lot of like the, the, the puppets that we made were very complex because they were covered with um, simulations uh, be, to make everything flop like a real puppet so that yes. we didn't have to animate it. And that was something new that like, you know, how we had to R and D, you know? And so for that, I think he would at least appreciate whether or not we, we did him proud on the Muppets. I feel like at least he could appreciate the technological try. Uh, I, I would think, yeah, I would think so. You know? I mean, who, who couldn't that like the, just the look of them that was go take me back to the, have you been on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true enough. That one guy. Yeah. Um, just go, just like going back to the image that I seen, the very first image, and you could see the the like the felt, like you could see like Fozzie's ears, and yep. it it looked like a puppet, and that's what I love about it is that like they act, they genuinely do look like the Muppets. It's not just you know, it's not just been half assed as we say in the UK. It's it's like it, it's so much effort's gone into it, and I love it. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah. it was it was definitely every single person on that crew gave it their all. Yeah, it was that, it, that must have been every that, that must have been emotional to to finish. It was probably one of the most. Uh, yeah, it was probably one of the most. Positive experiences I've ever had on a production in the sense that like, I mean, they've all been different and everything's different and good. But like in this one in particular, the amount of care and love and appreciation and camaraderie and um, just all of it was was overwhelming at times. You know, I mean, I I mean, when we recorded, it's funny. I I don't know if I, I don't know if I, you heard this story, but I I on the very last episode, you know, Kermit had to cry, and while I was recording him, I actually started crying, and it messed up the take. <laughs> and they were like, "Okay, can you just do it a little clearer now?" And I'm like, "I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm really you crying. Like, we know, we know, but you gotta." You still got to act. And I'm like, all right, all right. You know, it was rough. You know? and, yeah. Because, um, you know, it was, it's it's weird. It's it's weird when you when you become so close to something. And that was like five years of my life. You know, dude, you want to talk about Muppet Babies? When I started production on or started development on Muppet Babies it was like 2016. OK, that's when I had my first kid. Oh, OK. And then when we wrapped <clears throat> on the end of Muppet Babies is when I had my second kid five years later. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So I got, I had two Muppet babies during Muppet babies. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's amazing. So would would you, I mean, this is a silly question because I'm sure the answer is yes, but would you do it again if they said, you know what, we're going to, in a couple of years time, we're going to, we're going to bring oh, it yeah, back. Again. Yeah. I mean, in whatever way I fit, like I said, if, if, if I'm, if I, if I fit and I add value, then absolutely. Yeah. If they yeah. would love to help and do it. I mean, my, the Muppets in general, like if, 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 if there was ever a need to like, Hey, you, you want to come back and try some stuff? Like, sure. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, and I keep in touch with folks and everything. And I've, I'm, you know, I've, I've done work with, you know, various other groups, you know, in that vicinity. And, you know, and there might be some things I can't talk about that might be happening to you, but I was going to ask you know, one of my questions was like, is there more Muppet stuff coming up that you're involved? Well, that, with? that I, that I can, I can defend. I mean, yes, of course there is, but uh, that I can, I can, I can tell you, I'm not, I'm not involved with, but okay. that isn't to say that there are other, uh, aren't other things in the periphery of the Muppets that I might be. Okay. Planning. I just love, I honestly, I can't get enough of the Muppets. I just love them. I love everything. I'm not one of those people who like critiques everything to the point where I'm like, I didn't like that. I mean, there's some things I like more than others. I'm not a massive fan of the uh, the Wizard of Oz thing that they did. It's a, I like watching it with the kids. It wasn't really my cup of tea, but um, I, anything, I mean, I'll take anything. I absolutely love the the, the, the um, Electric Mayhem show they did. I love that. Oh, yeah, great. That well, what they won, and they got nominated for a bunch of stuff. And Yeah. And what a nice, soundtrack nice as well. Like, I actually bought the LP. Such a good nice. album. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I think um, it was did I am 8 bit do that? What's that? I am 8 bit. I think I think that was John Gibson that that published that. Uh, I'm not album. sure actually. It's it's over there somewhere. But yeah, I'm not sure. Um but yeah. Yeah, no, great. but but yeah, no, it's great. And I love that they're doing that. And I love that people love it. And that's really what I dig about. You know, you wanted to talk about what my favorite part is. It's this. You know, I love that you care and it worked you know you dig it and like you were entertained and you appreciate it and that makes me feel like yeah I'm yeah supposed yeah, to I've be been, doing this you know i've, I've been honestly i've been a muppets fan all my life like i mean my mom my mom would tell you that 
Um, and like I say, I forced it onto my kids. I'll have to send you some photos and DMs on on uh, on Twitter. Some of the pictures I've got. I've got one where I had this. It's a Kermit the Frog onesie. I look ridiculous in it. But yeah. we bought my daughter. She was only, she wasn't even two. We bought her one as well. And it's me sitting halfway right. up the stairs with her. <laughs> like sitting, ah, of course it you're looks, it looks ridiculous, but it's it's cute. Yeah. And then there was another one where I've got I've got a ton of Muppet plushes, like classic ones, like really old ones. And I'd set them all up on the on the couch, and I put my daughter in the middle of them. And you can't even it's hard to pick it out because she's dressed as Kermit. Yeah, it's so cute. Yeah, so I, what, what, I had I actually had a, a moment where I had to sort of help. I had to not restore, but um, uh, just kind of clean up some of some of my old Muppet merch. Oh, Cause, really? um, yeah, because some of the some of the puppets, the uh, the the foam inside starts to starts to go. Yeah, yeah. Like I had a Miss Piggy that like I still haven't restored because it's like the rubber head and the hair. You don't want to make it worse. Fine. The yeah. body, the body is just like it's just oozing orange dust. Oh man, I can't fix it. I had it. I have an animal too, and that one I was able to like get it out. Yeah, you know. But yeah, it's it's wild. You know how it's weird. You know, you hold on to these things for so long. Like I've. I have a, a Kermit from when I was a baby. You know, I've seen that, that there's, a, there's a video on YouTube because I've been doing my research. Right? There's a little video and you you show it like your parents used to put it in the crib with you. And Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's really cool. It's right over there, yeah. There was one thing I noticed on the shelf in that video. It's on the top shelf. There's a there's an animal up there which you acknowledge. There's, yes. there's, there's something else that you acknowledge. I can't remember which Muppet it is. But there's a Kermit the Frog puppet it looks like on that shelf but you didn't mention it but it really looks like this one that i've got and i'm just wondering if it's if it is the same oh it yeah looks, i think it is it's sitting there like this on the shelf yeah there it is <laughs> now this one's wearing a baby kermit outfit oh right, it's okay this is the one i think it is yeah this, this is it right that looks i mean it looks very similar this one yeah it looks uh, yeah so, i mean yeah, yeah. Anyway, so this this is actually we use this. The, the reason why it's wearing baby gap clothes is because we used it to shoot a test when we did the live action puppet Muppet Oh, baby. okay, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So they yeah. were like, "Well, how would we, how would one work?" And so we just went to a park and we shot one on on Tom Warburton's iPhone. Oh, and, right. Okay. Nice. And and you know we went like, "Oh, hi, how are you? I'm gonna go down the slide now." Yeah. You know, we did all that. <laughs> it's like so weird. Amazing. Yeah. This. So this yeah. one, I think. It might not be exactly the same. Yeah, this I got one, Sweetums hat too. I just found <laughs> <laughs> this one. Um, Macy's came out with a Muppet years ago, and I came at one that spoke. You could press like a, his chest or something, and it. Oh would speak. yeah, yeah. And this is, I think, it's one of those ones that a seamstress turned into a puppet. Oh, like, okay. to, to the point where she's like, she's made the, the fingers used to be fused together, but she's like put wire yeah. in the fingers. And maybe this is the same person. Cause look, I mean, that's this what I'm thinking. The, this one's got the wire in the fingers too. Yeah, see, it looks very similar. Like I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Look. What, what, yeah. Yeah. What colors the, in, like the inside. That's the, that's the inside it's, is it's like. Dark. A, yeah. Yeah, man. This, these have got this to be is getting the same. gross though. Isn't it? Yes. Looks, <laughs> yeah. No, it's, a, it's dark green. Yeah. Maybe it's yeah. the same person. I don't know. My dad gave me this. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. 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 Like I, I I'm I'm not gonna do it now, but I do a pretty good, I think a pretty good Kermit imp impression. I, you know what? And I'm and I'm sure it is. And I and you know what? And I encourage, you know, sometimes it's funny because people are like, Can I do my Kermit for you? Is that gonna offend you? And I'm like, no. I mean I'm like one of like seven Kermits. It's fine. Yeah, and no, I I just don't want to be that person that starts doing impressions to try and it, it seemingly get your approval. Like it's yeah, it, yeah. But, but I do it. it I do it at Christmas time. I sing um oh, Night before Christmas, I can't remember the name of the song, but from a Muppets Christmas Carol. Um, oh yeah, I I couldn't I, yeah yeah. I um, well, hold yes. on, I believe after you. all, there's only one more sleep till Christmas. And uh, I, sing, right, I, right. I sing the whole song to the kids with the puppet. And like my daughter's a bit old now, she kind of just sits there. Like, you know. That is pretty good. I mean, that was that 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 was you just kind of busting it out right there. And I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm gonna have to do a little bit now. Hold on. There's magic in the air this evening. Magic in the air. I can't remember the words, you know, but at least you can hear the voice. Like it's, yeah, you know, it, it's basic, nice. but it does the job. Like the kids love it. Absolutely. <laughs> love it. I see. That's anyway. what I mean. Like, this is fun. Like, you know, that's, and that's, that's what, you know, the, the same reason why I probably ended up getting the voice when I, when it happened, A, I, obviously I was involved, but like, you know, I auditioned like eight times. Like I wasn't like, 
I went up against everybody. Oh, really? You know? Oh, wow. yeah. No, we had a, see, we had a wide was passing like, call. I thought you got it on the spot. I thought it was like a, no, you no. On they, it anyway, I, I had to earn it because I wasn't a voice actor. You know, like I mean, I was, but like I'm like, hey, you know, he's he does like Goblin Number Four. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It's not you know because I do voices and all my stuff, but I'm always like, oh, there's a little weird creature. Like I'll just do that. Like we're yeah, we, just we, yeah, we, just, we, yeah, just in, yeah. Um, but uh but yeah no and um but then i but then they said hey you actually might have a shot at this you know and 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 i i remember talking to tom uh you know joe said that and then i remember going to tom warburton who i absolutely adore by the way um and he i said hey can i throw my hat in the ring here he's like yes of course you can so i did and i auditioned and then i submitted and then i did callbacks and then got called back again and then got notes and then was told, Hey, like we need to try, you know, and then, and, and, um, and Bowser actually coached me through a lot of it. And I coached him. I mean, I coached him. Like I helped yeah. him out by being an ear for him, but he really coached me a lot. And then eventually we got to it. And I remember even my first callback was a disaster because I was so nervous and I'd never done that before. Like really like a callback callback for something this important. Yeah. And I didn't realize that I was already nervous, but I didn't realize that, um, I needed to like, you know, cause one thing that people don't think about when you're puppeteering is a lot of them are looking down at a monitor yeah. Yes. Yeah, somewhere yeah. Else. and so it's a lot easier to do the Kermit voice when you stretch out your neck. And I didn't realize I was doing that until I went to the record and they put the mic up cause I'm tall and I was trying to do it. And they're like, it just sounds like you. And I'm trying so hard. I started sweating and then my, and then I like my, I was trying to stretch my neck out. My earphones <laughs> fell off. It was, it was Totally embarrassing. And I could see them on the other side of the glass going, Oh man, that's oh, yeah. Oh, that's this awful. is not going well. And so like I was broken. Um, and then Tom, you know, he consoled me and and Joe was like, <laughs> try it again. Try it again. Go record another one, record another callback, try it again. But like, this is it. And then I and then that got me to the next round. And but what I realized is I needed to lower the mic and get oh, in okay, like, yeah. So yeah, that so was the trick that out. is I lowered the mic and then so that I could get into it. Yeah. So that was the trick because all the, it's weird. Like I noticed all the voices have different postures. So, you know, Kermit, you kind of go like this, uh, Rolf, you know, you kind of get back a little <laughs> bit in the back, you know, it's in your chest and here Waldorf is a little bit in the nose. And so you got to kind of bring it up in here. You know, it's weird. It's like, I had to find where all the voices lived and even Beaker, like Beaker, I go, you know, like I had to like squeeze myself. <laughs> yeah, that'll be tough, that one, yeah. Yeah. Like when yeah. I had to do one of the things that I put a video up of it, but when I did had to do Beaker singing a rock song, <laughs> it, that nearly killed me. I had to wail as Beaker and it was like, I, I find as well. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a singer as well. Amazing. And I find that like the more takes you do, in my opinion, the, the less you, you're confident with it. Like, because you, especially with things that are high up, like Beaker, for instance, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but like, the more you're doing it, the more you're like, you know what? I need a break from this because I've been doing it for so long that like it's kind of straining me a little bit and I just need to rest. Yeah, there was there were times when it was like, yeah, there was. I mean, really, it was just um, Beaker, Beaker, not not so much because that one, the way I do that voice, it doesn't really hurt my chords. OK, it's more of a it's more I'm, I'm more squeaking it out because it's also not adult Beaker, like adult Beaker's. <laughs> You're like it's a little bit yeah. more basic. Uh, don't think is it on the inhale, isn't it? I'm pretty sure they that's how they do that. Uh, well, sometimes, but no, it's just it's just like you know, but it's more like that's more actually like using the vocals. Whereas when I go all the way up in here, I'm using them, but it's like it's how I used to talk to my cat. You know, it goes like you know, like that. So that was the that was how I squeezed it out. Um, but it didn't. That one didn't really hurt as much. It was more like if I did a whole session as Rolf by the end I would be a little hoarse. And so yes, yeah. usually what I would do is I would record Kermit first and then I would record the other characters just to make yeah. sure Kermit was clean, you know? Yeah. Um, Cause there's still a squeeze to it. You know, you're still, you gotta kind of squeeze in your throat in there and get it really in, you know, and then, <laughs> and then eventually like, but if it's, if it's scratchy, it sounds scratchy. Like you, you don't, you don't get it clean. So, so for, I know for Rolf, they had to turn it, put it like open oct octave didn't yeah. they? did they do the same for kermit or was that no kermit was most like kermit and beaker obviously waldorf was 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 not pitched um no those weren't pitched um but uh rolf we realized because i did a rolf that was pitched and it was sort of in this area but it, it just didn't feel like him yeah and so we realized if i just did the voice and then we just pitched it up it maintained his character but then felt a little younger 
Um, yeah. Same with Swedish Chef. I didn't I didn't do a young Swedish Chef. I just did Swedish Chef. I love, I love his little cameo. Yeah. You know, I just did that, and then then we pitched it up. Yeah, that was one of my favorite things. Was it's it, all the cameos that we got from all these different Muppets that were coming out. You mentioned earlier Jill, who was just like this one <laughs> character from one Muppet movie from years ago, which happens to be my favorite Muppet movie. Um, yeah. But yeah, just to see these old characters coming back, absolutely loved it. And that was nothing but a gift to the fans. Because the kids, they wouldn't know who that is. You know what I mean? Like some some of the older Muppets, they wouldn't know who those Muppets are. Yeah. Just a total gift for, for we, us. We fans. were going to keep going. If we had another season, we'd do more. Because if you notice every season, when we added new Muppets, we changed out the portraits on the wall. That's right, yeah. yeah. Season one, we had Scooter and Skeeter. But then season two, we had Sam. And season three, we had Beauregard. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, and we had a, I think we had a D- Uncle Deadly in there somewhere that we wanted to do eventually. And <laughs> well, we were going to call him Dudley, Dudley Deadly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, you know, would have been, we, we been a good one to see as a as a baby. A Which baby one? Pe- Pepe. Oh, yeah. That that was another one like that one. Just again, it's it's funny. It's it, it really came down to because the other thing, too, that you got to realize is we had, you know, again, we only got a certain amount of Muppets per season and we also had to share parts. Yeah. So like it was really easy for us once we made Rizzo to make a bunch of other rats. Yeah. Right. Or sense, if we, yeah. or if we or you know like like Rolf and Fozzie were actually the same bodies. You know what I mean? We just swapped yeah, out yeah. the heads. Statler and Waldorf, same bodies, swapped out the heads. There was a lot of there were a lot of puppets that uh and I call them just puppets now. Um but a lot of the Muppet characters that we could only like Sweetums was a big one. Like that one actually cost us more than one Muppet. And that was, we made that choice because we're like, we need, if we're going to do Robin, we need to do Sweetums. Um, we knew, I knew we wanted Swedish chef. Um, you know, eventually we did Muppet newsman, you know, but even that yeah. was just a swap of the head. We put them on one of Sattler and Waldorf's bodies and swap the head out. Yeah. Um, cause you know, cause that's the thing. We're also on a television budget. Well, so yeah, of course, we were yeah. only able to add so many, but yeah, no, if, if we had gotten more, we would have done baby electric mayhem. We would have done, you know, we would have kept going until we ran out of Muppets. Like we wanted to bring Link Hog- Hogthrob in and, and um, yeah, bring them all in. They're all there. Yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't remember the scientist's name. Honeydew. Link Hog. No, no, no. Cause we brought them in. It was the scientists right. from uh, pigs in space. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Someone, yeah. someone will, someone will say, I'll, I'll look it up after this. <laughs> that that but, one you know, guy. Link Hog on Trump, we were going to put him in there and, <laughs> you know, do all that stuff. And it would have been fun. Yeah, man, would have been excellent. A little baby, um, Walter would have been good as well. Although I don't think that would have played into the. We talked about it. Yeah, we did. I mean, we wanted to do a baby crazy Harry. We wanted to do with a jack in a box. You know, we wanted to do. We we had them all worked out, like you know. But we I just think had you did to... well, though. I think you got in. You got in some really amazing cameos. Definitely, Sam. I, I, my two favorites, I think, were S- Swedish Chef and Sam. Yeah, Sam. The Swedish Chef, cute. like. I was like, I, we got to do Swedish Shop. I think kids are going to think that's the funniest thing on the planet. Yeah, you know? yeah. Especially kids who don't know who he is. Yeah. Well, we see, I'd, come, I, I'd, I'd come home from work and my son would have watched the latest episodes. He's seen them all before I did. And I, I remember him saying to me, Swedish Chef's in this one. Sweetums, come and watch, come and see Sweetums. And he'd, he'd take me to the TV and he'd make me watch Sweetums. Like, and I'm just, I, 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 when he did that, I felt like it's like, I've done my job. Do you know what I mean? Like, because I've, I've wanted them to be a fan. And he, <laughs> now he's coming to me to get me to come and say, like, yeah. yeah. Awesome. The only the only question I kept getting from my kid whenever we watched Adult Muppet stuff, because now she knew all the characters. So we'd, we'd watch like Great Muppet Caper or something. And she'd always go, where's Summer? <laughs> <laughs> and I'd always wait yeah. till there was a scene with penguins in it. And I go, she's one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why not? There's penguins yeah. and Muppets. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a question that I've had as well. Like, where's Summer? What happened to Summer? Why isn't she around anymore? Well, she's one of the penguins. I mean, honestly, like she's a baby penguin and they change. They look different when they're older. If you know Is that why you went? Because I, I understand the, the the purpose for creating a, a character that was new. But yeah. is that why you went with penguin? Because it's such a familiar animal from the. Well, Muppet. it's kind of funny how it happened because we actually tried a ton of different animals. We were like, should we do a monster? Should we do a, a sheep? You know, originally, I, I believe we were working with a sheep. Um <laughs> we tried everything and, but you know, it's funny because one of the quotes that we heard that Jim used to say whenever he needed a, a button on a joke or, uh, or just something to kind of work out, he would go like, ah, put a, put a penguin in it. Oh, and no, and, I like and that. so we did that. We put a penguin in it and it became this cute little penguin. I and love that. that I was love the one. That. That's great. That's yeah. such an awesome reason. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Excellent. 
that was one of the funniest. I was like, there you go. You got to put a penguin in it. Let's go. Yeah. And, and, and she was a lovable character as well. Like, yeah. you know, it didn't take long to fall in love with her. Yeah. No, well, Jessica DeChico doing the voice, like completely brought that character to life. Yeah. And the whole cast, the whole cast was wonderful. Yeah. It was awesome. Great. Yeah. And so I've got to talk to you about the, the Looney Tunes quickly as well. I know I've t- taken okay. up a lot of your time as well, but I know you okay. worked on the Looney Tunes show. I, yeah. I'm obsessed with the Looney Tunes as well. You know, we're lucky enough to have Jeff Bergman come on the podcast. Right, actually, he was, right before, he was Bugs and Daffy on that version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right before uh, Space Jam 2 was released, he came on. And we talked a little bit about Space Jam 2. And then I released it when the film came out, like purposely to try and obviously get as much, you know, yeah. lessons as possible. Like, that was that was a that was a great interview we did with him. Um, but yeah, what was it like working on that show? Because I'm, I'm assuming you you're a Looney Tunes fan as well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, it, you know, again, it, all experiences are different. I mean, it was, uh, it was a very, um, it was it was a it was a it was a big growing experience for me, and I'll tell you why. And not because it was bad or anything, but because it was really interesting trying to figure out how to what to do with these characters on such a large scale because like the thing with this like for muppet babies you know the goal was very clear what we needed to do and what we set out to do and we were using and we're working with these legacy characters and we're working with the people who were involved with the brand and everything and the same thing happened with looney tunes um and the whole our whole experiment with this was how do we do looney tunes without doing the same old thing again you know what I mean? Which yeah, no one had true. really tried. I mean, they'd done Space Jam, but usually when Looney Tunes comes back, like Duck Dodgers was a good example of like, that's different, you know? But even still, that was based on a ver- on one short of Looney Tunes that could be serialized into a space sci-fi drama, you know? Yeah. Um, comedy drama. So, so at first, when I first brought, I was one of the first people they brought on with um, with Spike Brandt and Tony Cervoni. I worked with Sam Register and and um, uh, 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 Peter Giraldi. And, and it was, and it was, and it was really cool. Like, I mean, we were really trying stuff. Jessica Barutsky came in to do the designs. Um, and you know, the vision was let's do a modern day sketch comedy show. Like, not like, not like it's just shorts. Like let's do something like, not even like SNL, like something like Mr. Show or Monty Python or something where we can create one cohesive world where these characters can exist and they can interact with each other, but they can also have their own stories that filter into each other. And so we did a pilot, which I believe got leaked at some point called laugh riot. And that was our first idea of here's how you go from bugs, a bugs cartoon to a Daffy cartoon to a, 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 a Porky cartoon to a firework show to a Wiley coyote, you know? Yeah. And, and that was sort of our, our, our method for it. And, to be honest, it was just extremely tough to maintain that over the course of more than a few episodes. And so originally the whole season, the whole show is a sketch comedy show. And we got fairly far into it when we realized this is tough. Like this is not, especially like with, a, with a, on a kid's thing with commercial breaks and like, you know, all this stuff. Cause it was still television too. Right. Like yeah, of course, yeah. streaming yeah. even either. So there wasn't a freedom there of, of how much time we get, you know? Um, and so, you know, we, we sort of just let the show kind of evolve and we got to like, I believe it was episode five where Bugs and Daffy were roommates and that was supposed to just be for an episode, but that one was the one that everyone responded to the most. Like we tried doing Bugs and Daffy on an adventure together. Like, you know, there is a, there's a, there's a pilot. The first episode is actually Casa Kama which is where they tunnel up into the resort. And it's been, yeah. it, it got, it got redone to like fit the new show, <laughs> but I'm um, sorry. I had COVID a few weeks ago. So I still got a little cut. Uh, all right. Okay. Um, but um, they, um, it was hard because then we realized, Oh, we need, in order to do a sketch comedy show, we need these characters to play different characters and then having bugs, not being bugs and Daffy, not being Daffy. Like, cause it's like, oh, it's like SNL, but those are actors playing characters. Yeah. And now we have the bugs, the, the, the Looney Tunes as these characters playing other characters. And it just got really confusing yeah. and it got, and it started getting really difficult to maintain. And so anyway, I already said that, but so anyway, 
once we got to then then there was the bugs and daffy roommates and it's a sitcom and they all live in a neighborhood together yeah and that stuck and so then it was like okay well now how do we how do we do this so everybody doesn't like hate us you know and it and <laughs> You know, it took a little bit, but we we worked it out and eventually it turned into what it turned into. But over the course of that first season, if you notice, the show changes too. Because originally it's like there were Merry Melodies and I was directing all of those. I mean, I produced the whole series, the whole first season, but like, yeah. you know, I was directing all the Wiley Coyote. We did like almost 30 like CG Wiley Coyote shorts that were still in it. They, they were but great. Even some, those, of those, some of those, they were great. Yeah, they're cool. And they inspired those like those theatrical Wiley Coyotes and CG and like, you know, there was a lot that that came out of that, but but eventually we had to rein it in and turn it into something that was cohesive. Yeah, and and then at the end of the day, we looked at that and said that's still different, and that's new, and that's something that people haven't seen before with these characters. And and honestly, like I I'm thrilled. You know, it's funny because that show, I was on the first season, and then um, I in between season one and season two, I got another job and, um, and, uh, on, on to Dan versus, which is another one of those shows that I, that I sort of worked on. And, and then years later found out people really liked it, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I didn't realize how, how, how much people liked the Looney Tunes show until Twitter and until I found like, Oh my God, there's a whole fan base here. Yeah. And you know, like it. Lola bunny, like, you know, Kristen Wiig doing Lola bunny in my Humble opinion, I think it was a really good move, you know, and I'm not taking credit for it at all. Like I, I can't, but I, but you know, I was, I looked at that and I said, this is hilarious. And this yeah. is like, like a character now that works with these other characters. And I love that the internet sees that too. And so, you know, it was definitely an experiment and it was challenging. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah. It definitely tested me. And I think I learned a lot from it, but I really do appreciate that people like it. No. Yeah, I loved no. it. That's why we, I've got the DVD here. It's on my table. I, lo I loved it. Absolutely there it is. Loved it. It's fantastic. Yep. Um, but again, same same with the Muppets. Like, I'll, I'll take anything, you know, anything that's given to me as a fan. Yeah. You know, I, I'll lap it up. And yeah, I really like that version. There's been there's been others that are better than, you know, different. There's ones I preferred more than others, but this one is one of my favorites. Yeah. And again, like, who knew? I mean, like, I, I, you know, because back then and i say back then like it was like 10 years ago but like but but you didn't know because the internet wasn't as the fan base on the internet wasn't as savvy yeah so you didn't get that instant gratification it was airing on television so it was whoever caught it and yeah. on a kid's channel and so and i really didn't realize that it resonated so much with adults too you know um but then years later you're like oh people really dig this dan versus too i like i mean I, I like i love that show but like i didn't realize everyone dug it so much you know yeah. and that it's got a whole fan base online and i'm like that's great you know and that again that's what makes me happy i'm like oh yeah because sometimes you go like yeah i worked on that and it's like well you know who knows but now <laughs> like, oh, people dig it you know yeah so, I, I find that i don't know what it is about the looney tunes but i find that they're just not they don't I, it's almost like they're lost. They're just, and, and it's it's quite sad, really. Like when you compare it to like Mickey Mouse and and even the Muppets, like who have like found like a solid new fan base. I feel like sometimes that we get stuff from like lo from, from Looney Tunes, and then it's kind of just like put on the back burner, and it's they're forgotten about for for a while, and then it comes back again, and it's like, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know, I don't know if that's necessarily unique to the Looney Tunes. I mean, I really do think it's like these legacy characters. You know, like it's tough. Because I mean, yeah, you even Fred look at a show like, as well, and all those guys. It's yeah, the same like look at Jellystone, right? Like I think that show. Is, have you seen that Jellystone? I've, I haven't. Seen, I, I know that Jeff worked on that as well. Um, it's have, hilarious. Have it yeah. is so yeah. funny, and it is, and it is a weird take on 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 Hanna Barbera. I wish I thought of it. I think that was Carl Greenblatt, right? That, yeah. that came up with it, and Ben uh, and Ben Gruber, I think, wrote on it. Who's a great guy. Um, and I, I that's a show that I watched, and I wish I worked on. You know, because I was like, this is hilarious. But I think the problem is, is like, A, you have these characters that are legacy characters that are legacy characters because they were around before. Not necessarily that they've always been there, like Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse never went away. But like a lot of these characters kind of go away sometimes. You know, they disappear for a little while. Like same yeah. thing with the Muppets. It's like when, when we took on the Muppets, it was after Muppets Most Wanted came out, which came out five years after Muppets 2011 which yeah. was like however many years after the last thing that they can't, you know what I mean? So like these brands, they sort of, they go into dormancy while they're not happening. And yeah. then people forget about them and people and kids are born 
like like we had a, we did a statistic where it's like well why muppets 2011 did so well why didn't all the audience why did why you know why didn't the whole audience come back to muppets uh most wanted which i don't know if i don't think it did poorly but like but it, there was definitely a question of like what you know what's not clicking here yeah and what we found is is like first of all the first one was a lot of you know people who remember the characters bringing their family and kids and friends to introduce them to it which yeah. it did a great job of and that's why it was successful but then five years later another one comes out and you have kids that are five years old now that weren't were born when the first one came out that don't even remember it and yeah. i realized it because i was in the theater and like there was a, a five-year-old kid watching and i'm like oh that's great there's, there's kids watching this every time i'm up it went like hey what's going on here and like they go mommy who is that it's like that's rizzo you know what I mean? It was like that kind of thing. And I'm like, what's going yeah. on here? And I didn't even realize it, but it was because these legacy characters don't have the 24 hour coverage that Mickey Mouse has, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's part of it, you know, it's, and it's, and it's, and it's tough, you know, cause look at like a Popeye, right? Like everyone loves Popeye, but when was the last time you saw Popeye thing? Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I know. You know? And like, but when it comes out, you go, Hey, it's Popeye, you know, cause you know who he is and I know who he is. And yeah, but my like, kids a lot of people don't know who he is. Popeye is. Like, yeah, it's, it's a shame. It's, it's even it's like, Woody Woodpeck is another one. Like that movie that, cause I know Eric voiced him. Yeah. That movie was so underrated when that came out. Yeah. And they made, they made another one. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently so. Yeah. 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 What, but what that's what your... I mean. But it's like, but how many, and now there's Woody Woodpecker cartoons that are being made pretty regularly, but it's, but that's the thing with these, like, you know, and I'll call them legacy characters is that they're they're from an era where their existence isn't constant. Whereas nowadays no. stuff that comes out, there's social media and there's Twitter accounts and there's like the characters tweet. Like now the Muppets all have Twitter accounts. The Sesame street characters have Twitter accounts. Yeah. Um, and they're Cookie always Mon tweeting Cookie every Monster. day. Cookie monster commented on my potato one. <laughs> yeah. See, that's what I mean. <laughs> like, like, like there it's like, and it, that's, that's what makes them more relevant yeah, and, and it keeps awesome. them around. And I think that's part of it. But again, I, you know, I think Looney Tunes, you know, look, I mean, they just did a bunch of amazing shorts, the, the Pete Browngart shorts, you know, yeah. Uh, which I'm, again, that's another one where I'm jealous. I'm like, I wish I worked on that. You know, like those are yeah. amazing. Um, you know, are great. They got a movie coming out. They got the Daffy Duck, Pokey Pig movie coming out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Call um, and you one. know, and we'll see what the fate of Coyote versus Acme is. I was going to ask you your opinion on that. Do you think we're going to get that? Cause it, because I've heard so much about it now, I really want to see it. I really want to see it too. I mean, you know, I mean, this is like the Sonic movie or Deadpool, you know, it's like, just let us see it already. Like, I feel like, I feel like at this point, like, and again, I'm not in charge. I'm not, and I'm not going to, and listen, everybody loves to have an opinion online, but yeah. I can tell you right now, you have no clue what's going on in, in, in at that level with those people with oh, those man, I can only imagine. that much money the, yeah. you have no idea so it's i can just tell the like the internet like we hear you i understand it's really frustrating and it's and it's like i get it but like you can't pretend to understand what's no, going on I, I haven't got at all clue. i genuinely don't i don't understand. and I i'm in it i'm in money. the mix that's it i know that it's a money thing and tax it, but is it right I, we don't know it. that's yeah, the thing you, we don't know what it is nobody does i listen i'm in there like i you know i pitched to bob Iger, and i don't know what the hell's going on at disney you know what yeah. i mean like, i just work on what i work on and i do I'm my thing it, yeah. try to do a good job and not piss anybody off <laughs> yeah. um no but 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 so so here's the thing but it, here's what i can say from my perspective yes i want to see it i really want to see it i haven't seen it and you know, Baza, Baza doesn't have cut, you know what I mean? Like nobody does. Yeah. And I'm like, and so, and, but, but here's the thing very much like a Deadpool or, or a, or a Sonic, the movie, right. Where, where the fans were heard. Yeah. The movie came out, but the, the studio said, but you better come see it. We're doing this for you, but you better come see it. And, and fans said that, and they did. Yeah. Now those are some of the most successful movies ever. So yeah. I do think it has that potential. Yeah, it's uh, true. It's you know, true. We, so we just that's, keep, that's my, we've that's my keep, We've got to keep tweeting about it and making it making a, a noise, I guess, just to see. Yeah, just say you want to see it. I mean, that's it. Like, but but like you know, when when you attack, I mean, everybody knows. Like when you attack people, like they, it just makes you. It makes people want to withdraw. You know, like you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get anywhere by telling somebody their business. You know, yeah. like you can just just say that you want to see it. Sign the petition. Tweet about it and say, release the cut. I want to see it. I will pay money for this. Like just, and then, but 
when it comes out, you better go see it. Yeah, exactly. I yeah, will. Yeah. I'm going to bring my whole family and we're going to go to the theater. And I hate going to the theater these days because I'm terrified of getting sick all the time. <laughs> but I'm going to go and I'm going to see it. I did the same thing for Barbie and I did the same thing for Mario. You know, yeah. I do the same thing for any animated movie. I go to the theater and I'm going to watch it and I'm going to pay for it because I have to support this. Like, that's why we're doing this. You of know? course. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. And you can't beat. Right, I didn't mean to get on a soapbox there. What's a soapbox? Okay, I didn't mean to get on a soapbox there, but you know, <laughs> I just, I just, again, I, I, and I get the frustration. I want to validate everybody and say, I get the frustration, but you just don't know what's happening. You just no, don't. It's true. It's true. You're it's not in that room. Crazy. You're not on those phone calls. You're not talking to the, the board. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not talking to all the shareholders. Like you're not in those rooms. And the thing is, but the thing is, none of us would care if we didn't know what we know. But I, I mean, I'm going to say that. I mean, about what we know about the movie and what it's the plot yeah. and, it just At this point, it's got to Sounds like such a good idea. Like, well, now it's a movie behind the movie. You know, now I feel like yeah. there's a there's a whole like. At this point, I'm like, now. I mean, there was a whole thing in the Hollywood Reporter today about it. You know, and they yeah. they, they they quoted Bowser, and I'm like, dude, I will go watch. I if Warner Brothers is listening, I will pay money. I will bring my whole family. I will invite friends. I will I will go see this movie. Yeah, and if you ask it of me, I'll see it more than once. If you put it out, definitely. No, hundred percent. Me too. That's my pledge. Well, listen, Matt, it's been absolutely lovely talking to you. I could Me genuinely too. talk to you for another few hours just about just about what we've been talking about, just random stuff. Yeah. We've both got a lot in common. We both love, you know, our, our old kids shows and stuff. And yeah, it's it's been absolutely lovely talking to you. You too. And um, thanks again for your patience. I'm again I'm so sorry for no worries about that. But listen, life. Like, could you before you go? I normally get like a jingle off our guests. Yeah. But all I would like from you is could you just in Kermit's voice, could you say something for my daughter Alice and my son Charlie? Because I told them I was talking to you. Yeah. And you can say anything. Uh, yep. Uh, hi ho, Alice and Charlie. Uh, Kermit the Frog here. And I just wanted to tell you to give your dad a big hug because he's pretty cool as far as I'm concerned. Yay! <laughs> Bye, everybody. Amazing. Oh, Matt, thank you so much, man. So listen, I'm going to let you go, but very quickly, I want to show you. My desk has got, I've got like, please. whenever I have a guest on, I always, there's something on the desk that's like something that they've worked on, if, I, if I've got something. So like yeah. for for uh, for Jeff, I've got a little Bugs Bunny that just sits on nice. the desk. And then for uh, Carlos, I've got a little Rocco. Oh, nice. My, my son gave this to me from his collection, a little camera. Hey, yeah, so, that's the correct one too. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. I've got some of the little well, McDonald's ones, but this, yeah, this is got... one of the... I got I my I got this one when I was working on the yeah, I, I've got that one as well, but see that's not the right one because you didn't voice that one. That's, 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 one. That's, that's Frank Welker's Kermit. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so the, the, he's yeah, gonna be fine. standing next to Bugs Bunny and, and Rocco now. Oh so. why that's wonderful. Well thank you. No, thank you, Matt. Honestly, you've, I mean, I, I think we've been talking for longer than an hour now, and uh, that's okay. I was late. I apologize. Like it's it's all don't worry about it. Honestly, but this yeah, was thank, this thank was you awesome. So dude. No, no, you're very easy to talk to, and 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 great guy. And I, I'm a big fan of, your, of what you're doing. And <laughs> thanks for having me on. Thanks and, you know. very much. And I'm going to be keeping an eye on on these things that you're working on that you can't announce. Yeah, I, yeah. I so one, well, actually, on one thing one thing did get announced. So I'm, I I I I I've created a a, a retro video game show. Uh, okay. like a retro video game inspired show. So we, there was just a press release for that that came out. Um, we're we're actually starting production on that, which is pretty cool that I can actually talk about it. Um, awesome. But I created that one. And it's a love letter to classic video games. Oh man, that sounds um, great, yeah. When yeah, it's really out, You'll have to come back on and talk to us about it. Yeah. And then I got that's some great. other stuff. Like, like I said, I got one project that's coming out. I hope they drop it in February because it's really, really cool. And I cannot wait to be able to talk about it. But I am under lock and key on that one okay like, yeah no I'm, like I'm, I'm, I, I'm I mentioned fresh, yeah. i mentioned in another meeting like with with like a big company that i was working with one of the producers on it and i got a phone call saying don't even say that and i'm like okay <laughs> yeah you've got to be okay. careful haven't you? no you've no i'm careful. sorry i promise i'm not gonna say a thing you know <laughs> um but yeah and then i got a bunch of little side projects that are also really cool like those are all kind of a little ways out but but I, but the big one, the big one coming out is hopefully going to be in, in March and then, you know, okay. I'll, I'll tweet about it. You'll see it. Yeah. Well, I might be, I might be bugging you to come back on to, to promote. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if I got crazy. stuff to, if, if there's stuff that's, if I'm relevant, I would love to. <laughs> Cheers, Matt. Thank you very much. I'm going to let you go now. You have a nice night on there. We'll talk soon. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'll, I'll see you on the Twitter. <laughs> yeah, you will do. See you later. Bye. Bye. 
And just before you go, guys, don't forget that you can find everything to do with Majors Mess Hall via linktree.com forward slash Majors Mess Hall. And that will give you links to our Spotify, our iTunes, YouTube page, our merch over on Teespring, and also our Patreon page. And if you'd like to become a patron, sign up and all the money goes straight back into the podcast. And I also just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to all of our current patrons for helping us out. Because without you guys, we really couldn't do this. And also, please, please, please rate and review the podcast. You can go to Spotify and give us a rating on there. Five stars, please, would be amazing. Or you can also leave us a review via iTunes. It really does help push the podcast to the next level. So take it easy, guys, and we will see you next time on Major's Mess Hall.